In this lecture, we will talk about proximity analysis. Before we get to our topic, just a reminder that on September 22nd, uh, there is a one-page report due regarding your project, and I would like you to list there five references that you have studied about the topic of your project, also, you should define your study area, uh, the exact coordinates of this area, and also list the coordinate system and units that you will be using in your project. Then also include the list of datasets that you have already projected in GIS database, ready to use, and then the datasets that you still need to process or download. And uh, also, for this proposal, I would like you to include one image of your data and site. So, let's look at proximity analysis. Uh, within proximity analysis, we need to explain how do we measure distance in GIS and in geospatial uh, analysis in general, what are buffers and what can we use them for, how to work with cost surfaces and what is least cost path and what kind of applications we can use it for. So let's first look at measuring distance. Everybody is familiar with Euclidean distance, which is essentially a shortest distance in plane and that's the most commonly used distance. However, we often need to uh, use other types of distances. For example, uh, because our Earth is spherical, uh, we need to be able to measure the distance over sphere. And there the situation is a little bit more complicated. Most often we use shortest distance uh, over curved surface, which is called geodesic. On sphere, it is great circle, a so-called orthodrome. And you can find very nice uh, uh, derivation of the equations in uh, math world, on math world website. There is another type of line, uh, which is called ramp line, which uh, is a line that has constant bearing path. And this line is uh, shows as line in Mercator projection, but it is important to be aware that this is not the shortest path. So let's look at the example so that we know what we are talking about here. So as we said, geodesic, it's a shortest distance over curved surface. So for example, for two points, one in North Carolina, another one in Central Europe, the geodesic will go through England, through Canada, and then to North Carolina. So it will be here on this map, it's a projected great circle. Uh, ramp line looks shorter, but that's only because of the projection into plane. In fact, it's a couple hundred, uh, hundred kilometers longer than this geodesic. We will be in this course, we are mostly doing local and regional projects, so we won't be working with spherical coordinates too much. Uh, but even in the plane, we have different types of metrics for measuring distances. And one of them is so-called LP metrics that allows us to measure distances on the meshes or grids. And the equation is very similar to Euclidean distance. Uh, however, instead of exponent 2, we have a general exponent p. So this is a set of different metrics. And uh, if for p equal 2, it's Euclidean distance. And for p equal 1, it is so-called Manhattan matrix. And this matrix is essentially uh, based on computing distances, which is a sum of difference, absolute value of difference between the x-coordinates and y-coordinates. And we will show picture to, see, uh, to illustrate how it looks like. Another important way how to compute distances are distances in linear referencing systems where each location is defined by distance 
from a known point on a route. For example, from a milepost on a highway. And then distances are measured along segments of a network. And this kind of measuring distances is used, for example, for roads, utilities, or waterways. So instead of using Euclidean distance, we are measuring distance along network. So here is an example. Uh, we have here two points, these two, two orange points, and the, uh, and the Euclidean distance will be this line. With Manhattan matrix, where the distance is the sum of differences between x and y coordinates, the distance will be longer. This difference plus this difference. If we have a line defined by several segments, for example, we want to compute the distance between this point and the orange point, and we have couple points in between, so we will have these segments. Then the Manhattan distance will be computed along the grid, like this, along these blue lines. And you can see that the smaller the grid, the denser these points, the closer the Manhattan distance is to Euclidean distance. And Manhattan matrix is often used for computation of distances um, along grids with some modifications. Then linear, here is an example of linear referencing system. You probably recognize that this is uh, uh, wolf line. These are wolf line routes. So for example, again, we want to compute distance between two points. Here is one point, here is another one. Euclidean distance will be this dotted line. However, within linear referencing system, we will be really computing the distance along the route by adding the uh, distance along the segments between the bus stops. So again, it will be much longer, but if you are computing distance that you will travel between these two points, it won't be this distance, it will be this green line. So it makes sense. Then another issue with measuring the distance is the scale. Feature length is scale dependent, and by scale we mean the level of detail that is captured by rep in the representation of the, fee of the feature that we want to measure. For example, if we ask the question, what is the length of North Carolina coastline? Or what is the length of Nurse River? The second question that we need to ask, at what scale? There was a uh, famous embarrassing example in Italy where the media were all excited that uh, based on the newest, newest data, the Italian coast is actually longer than it was previously reported. And the whole issue was that uh, uh, the coastline didn't get any longer over those years what really happened that they have used much more detailed map. And this applies, the scale dependency applies to both vector model and raster model. In vector model, the length will depend on level of detail, how many points were used to capture, uh, capture the features. And in raster model, it will be uh, resolution, but also for the same resolution level of detail. So here is an example of what we are talking about. Uh, here we have two different representations of uh, uh, NC State coastline. Here is the official state level coastline. So you can see it has very rich geometry. And here is the representation of, of, on world map at the scale 1 to 10 million. And you can see that this will be, of course, much shorter uh, when compared the 
when compared to this and there are even some some barrier islands missing because they could not be represented at that scale so now let's move on to raster map buffer operations